All right, I think we are live on here already. I hope my voice is coming good and clear for all of you in Ramble and in YouTube. Am I coming good? Am I heard? People are Ramble, people in YouTube. Please let me know if you have any problem. <clears throat> Uh, before we start today talking about Muhammad, one of you sent me a video uh, from a website. It's called Gata Question. It's a Christian website. And you know, some people they are still convinced with the, um, uh, with the predestiny. And this is the website. You know, for me. <clears throat> You know me, I don't uh, sugarcoat things. And I believe those who believe in this, they are immature. Very immature. It's like a childless belief. So they send me this video here, and they want to explain to me their destiny. So I will start with it. Today's question is, what is predestination? Is predestination biblical? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. And afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources. So stick around to the end. Oh. Romans chapter 8 verses 29 through 30 tells us, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. That he so, you know, they get Roman. And that's it, because it says they are predestined, that means it's predestined. Just to show you how silly and how, <laughs> I mean, awkward. <clears throat> Everything in the earth, in the world is a predestined then. What, what Roman is speaking of, that those, there is people who they are chosen, those are prophets. For sure God has chosen them. I mean, it, it, there is every one of us is a prophet. Is every one of us is a disciple of Jesus? Is every one of us is uh, is going to be a murderer for Jesus? There is people who they are chosen, but those who they are chosen, they have to choose God too. So it's a very silly. I don't want to use the word stupid, but I want to show you the stupidity how it appears, and they make me angry actually. How many of you heard of the parable? of the talent which can be found in Matthew I think 20 25 right <clears throat> all right so let us go there you see what some people do they do the same as the Muslims they choose a verse, they make a story out of it, and they say they have to, be, to build now a new belief that there is a predestiny. A predestiny is insult to God. The predestiny here is talking about is not predestiny. Those are chosen and they chose God. As an example, Paul himself, who is the one who wrote this letter? Himself was an enemy of God. <laughs> so the very chosen one, he changed. He, he, he himself, he changed. So he changed to be, to, so he become a chosen. Is he predestined to be an enemy of God too? Was he a predestined to be an enemy of God? That would be silly. That would be even Abdulism. <clears throat> they say to you that God, he loved, uh, you know, uh, Isaac and he hate Esau. <laughs> but this is a verse written long after those people exist. Because of what, they, what Esau he did, it says God loved Isaac and he hate Esau. It's not a predestiny. Esau become a pagan man. His people become a pagan people. So this is what it meant. God, he loved those who love him. And God who don't like those who they are wicked. They make it a predestiny. But let us go to Matthew 25. Let me open it. No screen. Oh, okay, go on. Give me, give me a second. Sorry, it's my fault. <clears throat> Let me open the Bible first. Matthew 
All right, let us put the screen for you in. Uh, All right. Is my screen showing for you in uh, Discord? So this is the this is the video we played from this website. For God, uh, uh, for knew He also predestiny to be confirmed or conformed to the likeness of His Son, that He might be firstborn among many brothers. This is have nothing to do with what the predestiny you are talking about is about. Judah, he was one of the disciples, which means one of this group. Yet he betrayed Jesus. Are you saying that Judah, he was predestined to betray Jesus? If this is what you believe, that means your God is an evil God like Muhammad. Predestiny it's just an evil thought of God. You are making God a Satan. And look what they will do now. They will say predestined only goes for the chosen one, the good ones. The second you use the word predestiny the way you mean it, it's mean for everything. It's not only for the good ones. But the verse you are quoting here is talking about those who they are elect by God for their quality. However, even the very elect can reject him. Isn't it the Bible says that he, he came to his people and his, his people, his own, they rejected him? So here we go. God, he loved Isaac and he hated Esau, but the people of Isaac, they rejected Jesus. Aren't they the very elect too? Aren't they the chosen people of God? Did God choose wrongly? So it's a very silly argument. But let's go to the tenant. And I will better play the audio better than my broken English reading. Matthew 25 Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I will stop here. You see the word here speaking of virgin. What virgin mean? <clears throat> virgin are chosen ones. Uh -uh. They are they are they are they are better than other quality. I mean, come on, they are virgins. They are unique in many ways, but there is some they are foolish, and they think because they are chosen one, they do not need oil. They have lamps in their hands, but the lamps have no oil in it. And here. This is a response for those who say, uh, you know, we do not need these to be saved. Like the Calvinists, they say, once you are saved, you are saved, which is false. Those are versions. They think they are saved. This is why they are calling the Lord, Lord. But they have no oil in their lamp. So, this is why the Bible says, faith without work is a dead faith. So you have faith, all right, now you are chosen. But you have no work, obviously you are not chosen no more. They are waiting at night, but they have no oil with them. So the lamp will, be not, will not have light. 
So you have to connect the dots and you will see. And then the, 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 the parable after it is even more, more in details to explain to you. Because that one is speaking about the tenants, which is given only to the chosen ones. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every Do you notice here with me the word servants? Do you notice with me here the word servants? His own servants. Do you see the words own servants? All right. So can I say to be, not everyone is the own servant of the Lord? Not everyone. Those are servants of the Lord. And this is why he called them. They are chosen one. He called them. Not only he called them, he gave them talents. He gave them goods. And what happened next? Every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came, and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His I want to stop here. Do you see he says, I have gained? Does it say, I have gained? I have gained. So this is his own gain. Is it a predestiny for him to gain? No. This is why one will get reward, the other will not. One will be blessed, the other will not. Otherwise, all of them, they are servants. All of them, they are servants. But one, he work hard to multiply the gift of God. And one was selfish or a fool. He was just afraid to lose it. He buried it. The other one, he make it wise. So, Muslims believe that Adam commits sin because Allah, he predestined for him to commit sin. So, if you want to go and follow them and become like them, say, if there is someone is good because God shows him to be good, that means the good of us are not good anyway. That was God only. And you are not really, it's, you did not do anything of your own. But as we see all of here, all, all what Jesus is talking about is your own work. He gave you the talent, you multiply it. And there is a reward for the one who multiply, and there is dishonor for the one who did not. God did not treat them differently. God gave them tenant and says, go. Go and let us see what you can do. So the three of them are chosen, if we're going to use the word chosen. The three of them, they are called servants. The three of them, they are called his very own servants. His own servants. Yet, he chose them. Yet they have a free will. So free will is very important in Christianity. Otherwise, we are black Muslims. So that's mean we don't we believe that John is not a good man. It was God will that John is a good man. So it's a fake good man. Paul was not a good man then, because it was a predestiny of God that Paul is a, became a believer. He did not believe really. God forced him to believe. Peter, it's a predestiny for Peter to be Peter. Well, Peter is not qualified then, but because predestiny. <laughs> so 
the magic of a predestiny is going to destroy everything you believe in. So they take a verse out of context and they say, well, this is about predestiny. This is not what it's meant. In order for a person to be chosen, he have to choose God too. <clears throat> this is why Jesus says, Come, knock at my, at my door and I will open for you. So when Paul knocked at the door of Jesus, the door opened for Paul. Otherwise, the same person you are talking about, he himself was not chosen in the beginning. He was the enemy of Jesus. So don't mix things up. The Bible is so clear. Predestiny is a very, very dangerous belief. And I believe it is something satanic will make us the same as the Muslims. And then God is not just. Because if God, he chose someone, and because he chose him, he made him good, why he didn't choose me? I mean, what is my fault? So if he is good because God chose him, not because he is working hard in himself to obey the Lord, then what's my fault? He chose me, then God, that's it, and make me a good person. But we know, the book of Isaiah says, that God, our Lord, is a God of just. And to be the God of just, that means you have to be just with everybody. When Abraham, he believed, that count for him an act of righteousness. Even though Abraham, he was chosen, but he chose God before God had chosen him. From all his nation, nobody believed in the true God except him. So he chose him, this is why it considered for him an act of righteousness. And because he chose God, God chose him. However, then, Abraham is a believer. But God, he, brought, he blessed the seed of Abraham. Is it true? That God, he blessed the seed of Abraham? Well, both kids are from Abraham, Esau and Jacob. And they are supposed to even like twin. But isn't God, he blessed the seeds? But one of them become pagan, wicked. His people become wicked. And one of them, his, him and his people, they become believers in God. They follow the step of their father. This is why Jesus says, if you are of your father Abraham, you do the work of your father. But your father is the devil. Speaking to who? To those who they consider themselves the chosen one again. So my friend, God with Israel, when Israel are chosen God. God is against Israel when Israel are against God. The chosen one is when you choose God, not when God only He chose you. When God He chose His disciples, they were still free to believe or not to believe. This is why Peter, he denied Jesus. Did he? Predestiny is an illusion. And it's an insult to God. And me, myself, I found it immature belief and very silly. All right, now we go back to Muhammad. You don't have to agree with me. And by the way, I believe that those who believe in this, they are my brothers and sisters in Christ. But obviously, they have wrong understanding. We are not the same as the Muslim. They consider you like, I believe it's wrong. To say to somebody, oh, you are going to go to hell? No, still he believes in Jesus. He, will, he have a wrong understanding of the verse in the Bible. That doesn't make him not a Christian. But sometimes you have to be careful because that will lead you to something very bigger. And I am not saved just because I just say that I believe in Jesus. No. My belief have nothing to say, nothing to do with saying, I believe. My belief is the one I truly believe. This is why Jesus says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who do his will. And this is obviously totally destroy any predestiny. Did Judah, when he betrayed Jesus, did the will of God? I, I see people. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you, CP. How are you doing? My friend, I did not invite anyone here. 
please. I'm not done. Nobody jump in the stage unless he asks first. So, all the parable of Jesus is about what? Is about your will. Your will. Even the Messiah himself, the Son of God, he said to the Father, let your will be done, not mine. So you have to choose between your own will and the will of God. If it's everything is a predestiny, then there is no the will, there is nothing is called your, your will and my will. Everything is a predestiny. When the disciple of Jesus, they Jesus he said to them, Who of you want to leave? When people start leaving, if you remember the speech. He said to his disciples, any of you want to leave me? They said, no, Lord, we are staying with you. It's not a predestiny. <laughs> Do you want to leave? Is that correct? He said to them, Do you want to be, Do you want to leave me? They said, no, Lord, we are staying here with you. So be careful. Otherwise, you are going to jump and end in the Abdulism cult where the Abdulism believe that when you fornicate, it was a predestiny. When you kill, it's a predestiny. When you steal, it's a predestiny. And that makes the devil inside you feel comfortable because now you don't feel guilty. It's a predestiny, brother. The idea of a predestiny in a cult like Islam is to make the criminal feel good. It's a predestiny. Like this is why in the Quran you will see uh, when the Muslim they go and kill. You know, when you kill people, you don't feel good. Blood, and you, know, you, you, you feel ugly actually. But Muhammad, he wanted to believe that it was nothing but a predestiny. You did not kill them. I killed them. It's a predestiny. It was not you who killed them, but it was Allah who killed them. It was not you who launched your arrow. It was Allah who launched the arrow. <laughs> well, this is why you see ISIS when they when they when they slaughter somebody, you know, uh, uh, like or they shoot or etc. They will quote this verse, chapter eight, verse number seventeen. فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُهُمْ وَلَكِنَ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ وَمَا رَمَيْتُ إِذْ رَمَيْتُ وَلَكِنَ اللَّهَ رَمَى Destiny. So now the criminal, he feels better. Well, it was not my fault anyway. It's my destiny to kill you. Do you remember the video of uh, Mufti Mink? When he spoke about the caliphate who captured a thief. And then the thief, he said to him, why you want to punish me for something disdained for me to do? You remember it? Let me try to find the video for you. So if you want to believe in what the Muslim believe, then look at yourself first. Uh, Mufti. All right. Yeah, let us see this video here so we can laugh together. People start scratching their heads and they say, well, if Allah's written all of this, then why did he bring me onto the earth? Well, hang on, you don't know your results of your examination, so you have to come onto earth. The fact that Allah... What the point of knowing the examination, if the examination and the answer is written by Allah? <laughs> the question and the answer is Allah made, not my mate. <laughs> 
Allah knows it and the fact that Allah has written it does not make you a person who should now give up because if that was the case... What give up? If it's destiny, I cannot change it. What give up? Give up in what? <laughs> it's destiny. <laughs> give up. Then obviously you would be the fool. Really? You would be the fool? So if it's a destiny and I cannot change it and you are saying to me, don't give up? <laughs> And then you accuse me to be a fool. <laughs> Listen carefully to the story and then you will see why predestiny is a sign of lack of intellect. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab anhu, according to one of the uh, narrations uh, he had, he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, Oh Umar, oh Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. See, it's a good argument, brother. It's a quite good argument, brother. So why do you want to punish me if it is a destiny for me to be a thief? Do you see how predestiny can destroy any belief? Very simple question, destroy this now. Why you want to punish me if it is my predestiny to become a thief? It's not even right, it's not even fair. And the Sheikh here, he says, if you, if you want to think about it, it's a pretty good argument. Pretty good argument. Not a good argument, pretty good argument. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it for having stolen when it was predestined my deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. <laughs> it's a predestined for you to be a thief. It's a predestined for me to punish you. Assalamu alaikum. So do you want to be stupid Abdul and do you want to take the verses from Roman out of context? And now suddenly you became a believer in predestiny if the word predestiny is there. Predestiny there is that it is you like it was your lifeline which is given to you by your hand, by your choice to become in the likeness of the Son of God. This is not about predestiny the way you are talking about. The destiny here is your choice. It's not God who made you who you are. When God, is, when the Lord, he said, the Messiah, he said to his disciple, who of you want to leave me? If they are predestined, that means they are just like puppies. They have no choice to stay or to leave. Judah have no choice to betray Jesus. When Jesus says to Peter, stay away from me, Satan, was that a predestiny? Are you saying everything they say is a predestiny? Are you saying everything they write is a predestiny? That is the most silly, stupid argument ever. That make you nothing but a Abdul. Abdul the fool was certified. Remember carefully. Predestiny is an insult to God. Unless your God is the devil. So here the, have, the verse in Roman have nothing to do with the predestiny, the one they are talking about. It's here. It is our destiny. Like, okay, uh, people, they say to me, Christian Prince, uh, aren't you tired from this? I say, yes. Sometimes I say, okay, you know what? I'm going to stop coming to YouTube. I'm stop coming and talking about this garbage of Muhammad. But then I say to me and myself, well, if I don't do it, who is, going, who is going to clean the garbage? It's a destiny, but it's not really. I chose my destiny in this way.
There is somebody who have to clean the garbage from the street. So destiny is a very immature way of thinking and only pagan who want to be criminals and they want to justify their evil doing, they believe in the predestiny. The disciple themselves, when they do good, we will say we did, they, when they do good, they were predestiny, predestiny. When they do bad, they, they, they did not do predestiny. No, there is no predestiny here. This is wrong understanding. But he is like this is a, a way of meditation saying, it's my destiny to do this. We are chosen by God, brothers and sisters. This is brothers talking to each other about how they are the one who stand for the truth. However, each one of them, and we know in the history of the church how many people they betray the church every day. The same as people who betray Jesus every day in his time. When Jesus he entered the Jerusalem in this in, in the in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, Sunday, the day before or the, the, a week before the crucifixion, thousands of people they were welcoming him. Thousands. A week after, thousands, the same thousand who welcomed him, the same thousand they were shouting, kill him, kill him. Be careful. Otherwise, you are Abdul. And you are a fool. All right? Now we go to the topic. Of splitting the moon. Hey Muslims, in graduation, your Prophet Muhammad he split the moon again. How he did it, I don't know. I was watching the moon splitting. And brothers and sisters, subhanallah, I saw Prophet Muhammad next to the moon. 1400 years ago, there was an eclipse, and the Muslim they claim that the moon split, and it's a miracle from Allah. And the funny is, if you read the verse carefully, you will see that Muhammad he just gave a false prophecy because he claimed that this is a sign of the judgment day, and that was 1400 years ago. And you know, the funny thing is that the moon split by Muhammad. But nobody see it around the world. I will tell you why. Because that was a local moon. Uh huh. There's an international moon and there's a local moon. So the local moon in Mecca, only brother, is the one who split. Other moons, they did not. This is why the rest of the world, they did not see it. And remember, India is very close to Saudi Arabia. So if the moon is split in Mecca, they should see it in all of India. How many millions are in India? I mean, let us say at that time there was half a population, maybe a quarter of the population today. Let us say 10 million people at that time in India. How come nobody saw the moon split? How come nobody saw it in Syria, in Iraq? I mean, all that area, they have the same night, they have almost the same noon time. Nobody saw the moon split. Even in Europe, they should see it. The moon is split only in Mecca, brother. There is a girl, her name is Farida. She said that the reason nobody saw it around the world because it happened only for a part of second, brother. <laughs> for a part of second. A second, a second, brother, a second. And it's happened when people are asleep. <laughs> hey, guys, yesterday I did a miracle. Honestly, I split the moon, the the, the sun. Uh, I bought a, a new knife from you know Amazon, and I was splitting everything in my way. The moon in my way, I split the moon. The sun came, you know, like where is the sun is gone, you know, uh, Mercury. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I was I was stripping the galaxies pieces, but none of you noticed, by the way, because everybody was asleep. Otherwise, all of you can see it. But it was like, I was like, you know, it was late at the time. 
and there is no electricity, to be honest with you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said to myself, let me try this knife. So I went, uh, I found my flying donkey. I took it to this first galaxy. I saw the sun there. I said, hey, sun, come here. The sun came. And I said, do you believe in Allah? She said, no, I don't believe in Allah. I am an apostate. <laughs> I killed her, you know. Yeah. However, you know, the, it, Allah, he said to me, what, what you do? The, the people will have no sun right now. How those girls in the bikini, they will have sun tan. I said, oh, no, what I did. Girls in the bikini? That is the last things I want to do. Girls will not wear bikini no more. Alhamdulillah. I went back and I fixed the sun. I glued it together. You know, and I gave her like a CPR. That's why my my name CP. You know, <laughs> CP. So I gave the son CPR. You know, you know, and then you know the son came back together, and uh, now with the son you see it in the morning. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> hey, Muslims, I mean, how come your religion have no witnesses for anything? I mean, even your prophet, when he has sex, there is no witnesses. The, his wife, she says, he imagined himself having sex. Even his sex does not exist. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of somebody, even his sex is done alone? And supposedly he's having sex with the wife, but the wife is not there. Unbelievable. So do we have any Muslim who would like to join us? Anyone? Any Abdul? Any Abdul from USA saw the more split today? And by the way, Muslims, as long as Allah he split the moon, where is the verse about Allah putting the moon together? Shouldn't be the moon until now split? It says here split. Split it means become two pieces. So how come we don't have two pieces now? What happened? Somebody re it again? Hmm? <laughs> Any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday. Obviously, Muhammad, he did split the moon again today. And by the way, amazingly, it's cold outside. I mean, it's really, the temperature changed. You know? Uh, like, only four minutes, the sun disappeared in the middle of the day. You cannot imagine how big the impact in the weather. So imagine, this is, the, this is not the moon split now, this is just an eclipse. So imagine if the moon really split, you know? We will have tsunami, actually, the earth will grab the moon to it. Because now the, 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 the weight of the moon, the size of the moon changed, it became half. Two bodies. So now what will happen automatically that the earth is going to grab those bodies into it and they will hit the earth. And that is enough to destroy. In the best scenario, we will have tsunami flooding all over the world. Do we have any Mohammedan? And I want to know how Allah, he glow the moon again. I almost beat their story. I can make stories better than Muhammad's stories. Okay, I will tell you this is now a true story. Just hold on. See this verse here about the moon splitting? Not only I split the moon, I did show it. I, you know, I split the moon like an orange. I took the first part, I have a very strong teeth, unbelievable, my teeth, they can break a walnut like nothing, you know, like, <laughs> break it. So, I, 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 this is why, actually, if you notice, if you are watching today, you will see the moon have a missing part of it. Until now, nobody can find that part, but I cannot say, because the FBI will arrest me, I took that part, I did, I take a bite, I took a bite, I was angry. And what you can do, an Arab guy, and he's angry, what he would do? He would eat the moon. People around the world, they sing for the moon. Arab people, they eat it.
any Muslim? Hey Muslims, how come the moon eclipse did not happen in Ramadan? In the in the day where the Quran sent to Allah, by Allah, which Muhammad, I don't remember which day it is. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim would like to join us? Any Muhammadan from the, the moon splitting party? Anyone? May they, may they? Any Muhammadan here? Who is a Muhammadan want to receive a blessing of the moon god? The hour has a draw. And by the way, this is a poetry it was a story from an Arab Christian. Muhammad the thief. He stole a poetry of an, a Christian man <clears throat> and he put it in the Quran. Let me show you. The Muslim, they try to destroy this poet from every book they have around the world, for it's obviously clear that Muhammad the thief, he stole the Quran from there. Look at this. You see all those lines and there is underneath of them a black line. Those are exactly word by word Muhammad, he took them and he put them in the Quran. The first one it says, that is Sa'a wa Shaq al Qamar. I don't know if you can see my mouse on the, in the screen. Can you see it? Can you see my mouse? Where is my mouse is? Oh, it doesn't appear for you. Because this is an image I cannot highlight. Muhammad, he changed only one word, the first word in the first sentence. And instead of saying danat, which means cl close by, he said iqtarabat. If you look at the verse here, look. Here, the first word is what? Tarabat. In the original poetry, danat which is way more elegant. So, that is Sa'a wa Shaq al-Qamar. Take a screenshot here and see how this is exactly what it says here in the first line in the right side. Let me pause the link for you so you can save it for your reference. And then you will see that all the rest of those who they have a black line all of them they have are the same thing. Muhammad, he copied them word by word. Too bad the software I have is not like the other one. I cannot use my pen to write and because this is like software copy only the page or the browser I'm working in. It doesn't really record my screen. So all those you see from this point of Imr al Qais, all of them as you see here down, they highlight them for you in the black. <laughs> they made them in a big text. He copied it exactly word by word. Do you see the Abdul Muhammad, the thief? <laughs> And he claimed that he is making Quran. Do we have any Abdul would like to join us? May they, may they. I am so glad that the moon is today split by Allah. And I almost converted to Islam. And obviously Muhammad is a true prophet. Because the hour is so near. And the moon is split, brother. It's a sign of the judgment day. By the way. Always there is 
people who they are, even Christians too. They do the same as the Muslims. It's a business, brother. The, they make a drama about the eclipse. Okay, why? There is a verse in the Bible speaking about the bloody moon, etc. So they make a drama and do them, brother, the judgment day is coming, the sign of the day of judgment is coming, etc. You know, this, they were doing the same about what happened today. There is always false teachers who they are opportunity people. And there is always naive people who they, those scammers, they fool them. They put fear in the heart of the naive so they can control them. So now any eclipse happened, okay, it's the day of judgment, that's it. Oh, God is angry, look, the moon eclipse, what happened, you know? And the naive is all over the place. Any Muhammadan would like to join us? Listen carefully. If you are a Muhammadan and you join us, I guarantee you free ticket from Hassan Nasrallah to Jerusalem. The leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, is giving a free ticket to Jerusalem, brother. So if you join us, I can call Hassan Nasrallah for you, who is hiding in his basement for the last 26 years. Yet he is given tickets to go to Jerusalem. But him himself do not dare even to ride a donkey in the street. Any Abdul? Just one question, Abdul's. How come nobody saw the moon split around the world? If there is any historian in ever in any history in any country wrote that the moon split during the lifetime of Muhammad? Anyone? <clears throat> Nobody? Not a single Muslim? How come Muhammad miracles always happen at night when there is nobody there? Muhammad, he went to the 7-Eleven heaven and nobody was there. Even his wife, she said, his body was next to me. Any Muhammadan would like to join us? Look like nobody is interested in the versions no more. No one? By the way, the moon splitting was a predestiny. It's a predestiny, right? I mean, thank God I'm not the moon. I mean, imagine you are one moon, second day you are two moon. Like, what the heck? What happened to me? It's a predestiny. Like, what? And then, like, he's confused, like, I'm one or two? How you can be one and two at the same time? Like, are you the same as the Christian? They believe in one and three at the same time? What? 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 That is impossible. If there is anything Allah he split beside the moon, like we do not know about, Muslims, why Allah did not split the sun? I mean, why the moon? In fact, the sun is easier because the, moon, the, the sun is just gas. Uh, you know, gas. Melting gas, you know. Just, uh, splitting the sun is easier. The moon is a rock. So why Allah did not split the, the sun?
Tani Muhammadan. Why the Muslim did not ask a uh, prophet of Allah how long he can spread the moon? I mean, spread the sun, and that will make the sun half size, and then the desert of Saudi Arabia will not be desert no more. It's not going to be so hot there. It's going to be cool. The only thing I know that Muhammad, he forced the Muslim to split their money with him and their wives. This is the only split I can confirm. Any other splitting? Anyone? Looks like today we don't have any Muslim. Muslims are splitting their time between here and there. Any Muslim from Rabba, YouTube, want to join us? We have a link for you for Discord. You can just click on it. Bingo. And you can split whatever you want when you come here. Any Muhammadan? By the way, talking about splitting, uh, this, uh, this is a true story. When I was a member of Hamas, this was like a long, long time ago. The Israeli, they shot at me in the RBG. Brother, subhanallah. The RBG, I was talking to my brother, Muhammad. The RBG came, uh, you know, rocket came inside my mouth when I'm talking. Subhanallah. Anyway, brother, I just uh, like chew it, chew it, chew it, and uh, throw and spit it out. And nothing happened to us. True story, brother. This is a true story. And then the Israeli, they saw what I did. So now they changed the rocket, like so they, they decide to send a big rocket. Uh, it was like a two millimeter, you know. So they send a big uh, rocket to millimeter. Uh, it's called, uh, you know, the rocket of uh, two millimeter. Uh, this is the name, you know, this is what they call it. Anyway, and uh, I was like talking to my brother, Abdul Muhammad. Uh, and I was calling them. I was saying, may they, may they, like send the reinforcement because we are fighting the Jews, brother. And then they send the rocket, and it came in my nose. And brother, I hate it. It felt like a booger. I push it out, Alhamdulillah, nothing happened to me. The Israeli give up. They cannot kill me. So what they do? They decide to do a trick. They knew like I like baklava. So they put 10,000 kilograms of TNT in a little tiny container of baklava, and they send it to me. And because I'm like, I cannot really resist baklava. So I open the box. I saw the baklava and I took a bite. And that was it. Explosion, big explosion. They were able to break one tooth further. Alhamdulillah, only one tooth. 10,000 TNT, kilogram of TNT and nothing happened to me. Only one tooth. And believe it or not, my tooth grew second day. Because I was using camel urine as a solution. All of those stories are true stories. Young, are you a Muslim? <clears throat> I am. I am indeed a Muslim. Oh, that's. I could say in regards to this, uh -huh. I am a Trinitarian Muslim. So you... I believe in four uh, Trinitarian part of Muslim. What does that mean? Yeah. What What does that mean? So, in way of Christianity, I believe in in uh, Trinity. In that, uh, uh, God is divided. Allah is divided in three parts. A Trinitarian Muslim believe Allah is also in three parts. But, but uh, Christians don't believe that God is divided. Not not in divided, but you understand meaning. Okay, how, how what is the three parts of Allah? Or four parts okay. of Allah? Okay, so you, uh, four parts, yes. Uh, you have Muhammad, uh -huh. Quran, Ruhullah, and Maryam. Ooh, that's deep. What is the name of your sect? Uh, my sect, uh, Bali Islam, 
which is true form of Salafi Islam. Bari Islam? Bari? Yes. Is that like Indonesia, Bali? Uh, no, I'm Turk. The what? Uh, ben Turkse. Ben Turk. Ben, 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 ben okay. All right. But uh, so now you are saying that Mary is part of Allah too? Yes. And Muhammad? Uh, and Muhammad? And, yes. And Allah. So those are four. Yes, that, so what uh, uh, what is the what is the what is the position what is the position of Mary as part of Allah? Uh, Mary is fourth member of Trinity. How she is a, how it is a Trinity, and she is number four. Because in uh, from knowledge of older Latin language, um, it it's more like. Quaternity, but I use term Trinity to explain in similar relation to a Christian Trinity. But it's four, not the Trinity. Okay, what is Mary? What is Mary's job in this uh, four Trinity? So, a uh, role of Muhammad is to be the ultimate speaker, the center of Allah's judgment on the world. A hmm. uh, role of Quran is to be holiest item. The holiest thing revealing Allah's physical presence on earth. Okay. Uh, Ruhullah is the spirit of Allah, guide Muslims to uh, guide uh, in freedom and uh, in uh, how guide for further uh, piety. But, but this is now five. You count for me, Muhammad. No, no, no. You count Ruhullah. No, you count Mary. You count yeah. Allah. No, you. Allah is all five members of Trinity. So now there are all five. You, you, in the beginning, you said it's four. Yes, I said it's four. I oh. I sorry for misspeak. So Allah is encompassed of all four member Trinity. Okay. So you know. So uh, so the Quran is it created? The Quran it is not created. Is Muhammad is is, is Muhammad created? No. Muhammad is not a creator? No, Muhammad alayhi wa sallam, is uh, not created. He it, is clearly exalted in all okay. aspects. Is Mary is a, so is Mary is a creator? No. And Ruh Allah, Spirit of Allah is a creator? No. So now you are saying to me, you Muslims, you have five divine? No, four divine. Five, Allah. So Muhammad, Isn't Allah is Quran. one of them? Allah. So Allah is combination all four. Oh, so Allah is not exist unless we put the four together. Allah is manifestation of all four. Like in Christian Trinity, you don't have a, a Christian Deus, right? Uh, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have Christian Deus if you don't have a, a Father. No, no, no. This is you see. This is not. This is not really what we what we Christians. It's not about if you don't have, if you have. This is what it is. It's not about if this is not there. God cannot be there. God is there. God the Father is there. But this is how God is. But now let us go back to zero. So if Muhammad is not a created, that means Muhammad is God. Yes. Okay. Muhammad is Allah. So uh, how how you come how you come to your conclusion that Muhammad is God? I have come to conclusion by knowledge of more hidden aspect of what is your what is your reference for that? Like where do you get this from? Uh, uh, hadith uh, oh, Surah Injil, Surah Saddam, uh, so, hidden. So, surah what? Uh, hidden Surah in Quran. Hidden, oh, hidden. It is hidden where? Um, so Quran, only the true Quran is the uncorrupted, but the current Quran that all fake Muslim have, that is the corrupted Quran. <laughs> Sorry, I'm drinking water. <laughs> uh, 
I can tell you are laughing. All right. Okay. So, well, my friend, <laughs> you said the hidden Quran. So as long as it's hidden, how you have it? Because it was revealed to me in dream. Oh. It was hidden by Uthman. Okay. Uh, but Allah revealed a uh, true Quran to me in a dream. Mm, I see. Can you recite the Quran, the true Quran for us? Uh, I All right. I will recite Quran uh, 14, uh, Quran Surah Ibrahim, Ayah 88. And you know the Quran revealed to you. I don't want the Quran of the fake Muslims. You want to recite for me no, the fake Muslim Quran? Surah Ibrahim, Ayah 88. I recite true Quran of true Muslim. Ah. When the war has lasted uh, 20 years, the dragonets will come. When the land is soaked in blood and tears, the dragonets will come. Find the seawing egg of deepest blue. Wings of night shall come to you. The largest egg of mountain high. Wings of night shall uh, come uh, come to the sky. For wings of earth, search through blood for egg, or search through mud for egg the color of dragon blood. And hidden alone <laughs> from the rival queens, the sand winged egg awaits unseen. All right. Of take a hike. Take a hike. Lord have mercy. Oh boy. I was going to <clears throat> lost my breath from laughing. Lord have mercy. Oof. That's it. The heading the heading Quran. Allah he review. Make a book. Trust me, this guy he can start a new sect. I mean, there's a lot of people, well, people are foolish, you know, just, he, he can make a new sect and he, he would have millions of people follow him. Foolish people everywhere. By the way, I did not tell you, this is, I, I saw a dream of the real Quran too, but I was dreaming about women with three boobs. So I, I Allah revealed to me the chapter of three boobs. Uh, and then, you know, like I was sleeping, and then, like, uh, uh, I heard the sound, like, boings, boing, boing, boing. And, you know, I always have guns around me because, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of enemies. So I woke up, but I was asleep still, you know, but in the dream, like, I woke up. And then I found the women, she had three boobs in front of me. And I was, like, looking at, like, I have a cross eyes. Like, which one of them I would look at the same time? It's hard to look at three boobs at the same time. Like, you can look at two boobs because you have two eyes. But three boobs at the same time? I'm telling you, this is very hard. So anyway, I was looking like, what is that? And then Allah, he says to me, this is the booby boob uh, chapter. Uh, I will give you a chapter, the chapter of the boobs. Uh, he said to me, uh, uh, CP, I will give you from the boob devil, and I will make them full of nipples. And when you squeeze them, a milk come and make bubbles. <laughs> And I was like, what? I was like amazed with, with the language, so strong. Like nipples, bubbles, doubles. Wow. You know, like, just deep, you know? And then, and I put my hand on them. I start squeezing, like, and they start making noise. It's like those, you know, they, you have them on your bicycle, like, beep, beep, you know? <laughs> you know, they, it sounds weird. So I told Allah, why they are making noise? He said, because they are so happy because you are holding them. And you know, those, and that's why the chapter is uh, now is called the happy boobs, you know? And uh, I don't know, today I will sleep, I will receive more chapters, I will let you know, I will update you. All right. You want me to put you back? <laughs> my friend, I don't have time for madness. <laughs> oh, all right, just go, go. Do we have any Mohammedan? Any Mohammedan would like to join us? Beside the one who received the hidden Quran. You do not need to reveal your hidden Quran here. Make it make a YouTube channel and tell people about what you Allah revealed to you. Why are you coming to me? 
Ja, mir lieber wo. Make a YouTube channel and tell the Muslims around the world, you know. Go, you know, I advise you to call a guy, his name Ali Dawa. Tell him a Christian prince, he sent me to you. Honestly. And tell him that you have the hidden Quran. All right? But don't tell him about the poop chapter. He will take it. He will add it to the Quran. And Muhammad will claim that it's given to him before it's given to me. Any Muhammadan? May they, may they. We want Muslims, we want Muslims only. Any Muslims? People are rambled, you hear me good? You're all right. Any Muhammadan? So conclusion for the moon splitting today, there's no witnesses when the moon is split in the time of Muhammad. And obviously, the moon which is split by Muhammad was a local moon. It's a Mecca moon. Different from the moon people they see around the world. Like I remember one of my cousin, he uh, he was walking uh, like in a in different town, you know. So the guy he says to him, uh, "Do you know what is day of the month today? The moon is uh, like crescent moon." My cousin he said to him, "Sorry, I'm a stranger." <laughs> yeah, because the moon in our town is different. We have different moon. Arab people, they have local moon. This is why when Muhammad split the moon, only people of Mecca, they saw it. Nobody else. And by the way, there's other miracle which is very powerful too. It's like a nuclear miracle. According to Muhammad, when his mother, she gave birth to him, a light came out of her vagina and reached all the way the palaces of Damascus. Now, what is the difference between Damascus and Mecca? I think it's like, I don't know, 2,000 kilometers. I'm not sure, really. Uh, let us see. Let us see. Hold on. So imagine, brother, and by the way, and nobody saw this miracle. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw the light coming from the vagina. Nobody saw anything in Damascus. So this is Mecca. And we go to Damascus. We keep going. We keep going. This is, and by the way, the light, it, was, it looked like it was a directional light. <laughs> It went only to Damascus. It's like aiming at Damascus, brother. Look, 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 look. What is Damascus? Hey, oh, this is Syria. Okay. Oof. The light coming from the vagina of the mother of Muhammad, may Allah bless her vagina, reach all the way to Damascus. Hey, Muslims, why always the miracle of Muhammad Nobody see it. 1,388 kilometer. Okay. Thank you for the information. I don't know. In, in my time, it was bigger. The distance, I think, is shrinking. The Jews, the Jews, brother, they are shrinking the distance. <laughs> you know, the Jews can do it. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like 10,000 kilometer before. But those Jews, they are eating the land of the Arab, brother. The Jews. Yeah. 
it was a distance. I, you know, I remember like, you know, when I was a kid, I took, uh, you know, it took me 10,000 years to go from uh, uh, Damascus in Brazil, uh, going all the way, you know, down, the, you take, you take right, you know, when you like, you know, like when you go, you know, you take right, and then you take left, and then after that, you find yourself in, uh, you know, uh, Thailand. Uh, and then, you know, like you jump to the corner, you will find yourself in Mecca. So anyway, like it was like a, like a very long distance. And now look, it's subhanallah. It became only 1,300 kilometers only. And 88, look at the 88. Fishy, very fishy number. So the light fly from Mecca to Damascus, 1,300, uh, well, how much, how much? My memory is not doing good. Three, 1,388, right? Okay, 1,388 kilometers. And look like this. I think what happened that the mother of Muhammad, her vagina was facing Damascus. Otherwise, I mean, why did not go a different direction? And how the light, I mean, hold on. You see the earth is not a flat. How the light, like, it was like a rainbow, maybe? Ah, it was a rainbow. The Muslims, is that true story, or this is a fabrication of Muhammad? About the light coming from the vagina of his mother. Hmm? And why the light was so powerful, but there's no fire happening? What do you think? I mean, if a, I mean, do you know that light can make fire, my friend? Is that a laser? Laser light? Anyone? Okay, forget about anyone. Any two? I don't know, maybe any two can bring customers. Anyone is not working. Sometimes you have to change the, like, you know, the, the logo, you know? Like now Trump, he, he went to the TV and he told them, I believe that now we should do, uh, every state can vote for abortion. He want to win the election, doesn't matter if he, they have no ethic. Suddenly now anyone can vote as he wish. No, you don't want to lose those who vote for against abortion, you see? Yeah, yeah. Any anyone want to vote for abortion? Vote for abortion. Trump, he wants the fornicators to vote for him. CP is from the Middle East, but no one as as far I know know where CP is from. Mystery. Brother, I'm black, blonde, African American from Japan. You know, I use like in Pal Talk, I used to have a profile, like you know, like any like chat program. So I put the profile for fun. I'm black, blonde, African American from Japan, looking for four wives. So each time I go uh, to a chat room, a Christian chat room, they bounce me. Like why are they are bouncing me? <laughs> and then one of them he told me because you are saying you are looking for four wives. <laughs> so I change my profile and make it five hoping that would be okay because according to my understanding the number was so little <laughs> unbelievable true story by the way <laughs> yeah <clears throat> do we have any Mohammedan? I imagine CP look like a grand wizard. I like the word wizard. I don't like the word grand. Can you keep it as a wizard? <laughs> grand wizard. You remind me of the story of the lizard. I mean, imagine, brother. All, 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 all the animals, they come to stop the fire on Prophet Abraham. Except the lizard. Oh, son of Mullah. Unbelievable. Ha, ha, ha.
Uh, what his name? This guy, the the sheikh. What his name? I forgot his name. Asim Asim Al Hakim. The one hundred dollar for thirty minutes. Who is here first time? If you are here first time, I feel sorry for you. Really, I mean, you you better leave. Otherwise, you are stuck here. I'm telling you. Uh, look at this. Look, wisdom. This is wisdom. Um, <laughs> the wisdom of Muhammadans. Wisdom. The wisdom, brother. Um. Aisha says, can you please explain the hadith about why we should kill the house lizard? First of all, the house lizard, I think they call it salamander or something like that. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, the, the house lizard is an insect. <laughs> I thought lizard, they eat insect. It turned to me they are insect too. <laughs> It's a type of insect. <laughs> I mean, you must be a scientist from the Amazon, brother. <laughs> it's a type of... <laughs> I'm going to die one day laughing, you know. The guy was reciting the Quran almost. I, oh, boy. Water, please, water. Oh boy, it's cold, but I am I, I don't feel cold no more. The, the house lizard is an insect, an insect that is harmful. Some of it cause a lot of diseases. And uh -huh. some say that it intends to walk over the food and the, the drinks and to poo. Guys, do you know, do you know, I noticed that, seriously. Those lizards, <laughs> you know, and the other day I was watching a lizard last summer, not now, we don't see lizard now. So this guy, the lizard, uh, he was wearing a green suit. Uh, he went over the dish, he unzipped, like, whiz, you know, zip. he put down his panty, and he started pooping, like, uh, you know, and, and his tongue is coming out because he's squeezing, you know, and the green, green stuff came from his ass, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. He do it on purpose. He intent. He intent. He do it on purpose. I mean, evil, evil. He, what do you expect? What do you expect from an enemy of Allah? And to poo, <laughs> where it puts a lot of its illnesses and diseases in people's food. So, in general, it is a dangerous creature that only brings harm to the people. By the way, lizards are very useful animals. They they help in controlling <laughs> bugs. The farmers, the farmers, they love to see lizards around in their farms, because bugs they can destroy uh, their 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 crops. And lizard they help to control. There's many uh, useful species. If, uh, farmers they need them badly in order to control the the volume of bugs in their farm. And this guy is saying this art is very harmful. In general. And if you notice that anything that is harmful, Islam tells us to kill. Like Christian Prince. Harmful. <laughs> you notice. <laughs> so Islam tells us to kill a wild dog that bites and attacks people. Liar. Your prophet, he said, kill all the dogs. But people, when they complain, he said, okay, kill only the dogs, which is not guardian dogs. You are a big fat liar. It tells us to kill mice because... Because mice is the enemy of Allah. They spread all types of diseases. Plague is one of they are most infamous for. And also they cause fire in houses 
Yeah, yeah, Prophet Muhammad, he mentioned how mice, in purpose, he go and he grab fire from the fire, and he take it around the house to burn your house. Revenge. As in the, play, in, in the hadith of the Prophet, it tells us, mice do heinous things. Heinous. Though people nowadays are so fond of them. We're told to... By the way, the Muslims, they have fatwa against Mickey Mouse. If you don't believe me, search right now in Google. Fatwa to kill Mickey Mouse. And Mickey Mouse, by the way, say hello to all of you. He is under the FBI protection. Don't worry, he's fine. They took him to a hidden house in Disneyland. <laughs> I, I, honestly, if you don't believe me, search Fatwa to kill Mickey Mouse, the enemy of Allah. Kill the cross. By the way, hold on. Do you know how... Uh, this, uh, anyone knows the story of uh, the mice in the in the ship of Noah? Who knows the story? Anyone knows the story? Noah, when he went in the ship, <clears throat> according to Muslims, according to Muhammad, he found that there is a mice get inside the ship without his permission. Look at this problem. And this mice is going to destroy his food. So Allah, he asked Allah. And then Allah, he made the lion have a flu. And the lion, he sneezed. Hachu! And a cat came from the mouth of the lion. The Muslims, am I lying? Muslims, I'm lying, lying. I mean, where your prophet he got those stories from? He sneezed and a cat came from the lion. <laughs> it must be a very true story. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> let me show you some reference anyone want to see a reference you guys you want to see a reference before we continue with the video who want to see a reference nobody wants to see a reference okay nobody wants to see a reference so that's okay people don't like it you want to see a reference? Okay, I changed my mind. I'm an Arab. I don't like. I don't agree with people when they agree. I like. I like people who don't agree. Like if I say you say you like it, you say you should say no. You should say if you say yes. Uh, then we. Uh, no, but we know, that's what doesn't work. You have to say no, and then I get upset. And then I will show it to you what uh, what yes. Uh, what's wrong with you people? Weird, weird. Those people are weird. I'm telling you. You have to be an Arab to understand the, the, the formality of discussion. <laughs> okay, let me show you. Let me show you. Hold on. So here, let us see. <clears throat> I will give you the link too. But this is in Arabic. What we have to use, we can use uh, English translation. And please post the link in, uh, in uh, Rumble and YouTube. So... When uh, when Noah he carry to his uh, ship, uh, let me let me translate. When Noah loaded two from each pair into the ark, his companions said to him, "How can the livestock be at ease when there is a lion with them?" So God gave the lion a fever and it was the first fever to descend on earth. So he busied himself. Then they complained about the mouse, and he said, the worm is spoiling our food and our enjoyment. So God inspired the lion, and he sneezed and he came out. The kitten hid and the mouse hid of which. <laughs> true story, true story. I mean, come on. So now we solve the problem. We have a mice. We get the cat. <laughs> yeah. 
It looked like God did not create cats. You know, no, God, he is a lion sneeze. You see what happened when lion sneeze? Keaton came out. <laughs> Do you see why Muslims don't dare to debate me? Because I have the long of Muhammad. All of it. Okay, let's go back to the video. Brother, tell us more of the wisdom, brother. <laughs> a crow that also carries diseases and eats uh, uh, dead meat. No, you kill the crow because it's black. Your prophet says, Kill every pure black. Liar. We're ordered to kill snakes. We're ordered to kill snakes because they are not a Muslim genie. If a Muslim, he see a snake in his house, he have to give it a warning. If it's a Muslim, a Muslim, Muslim snake will leave because a snake is a genie according to Muslims. If it is not going to leave, that means it's not a Muslim and then you can kill it. To kill scorpions. And these by nature are harmful uh -huh. for people. So killing them is justifiable and it's a legitimate thing to do. Likewise with the house lizards. And there is a hadith no way. Tell us. In Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that when Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was thrown by his people in the blazing fire, all the creatures of Allah used to try and put off the fire, with the exception of the house lizard. It used Disgusting. Brother, you just told us we have to kill the, the crow, we have to kill the mice, we have to kill the scorpion, we have to kill... And now you are saying all the creatures came to save Abraham, so why you want to kill those? <laughs> he just said all the creatures came except the lizard. So why you want to kill the crow, why you want to kill the scorpion, why you want to kill the mice, why you want to kill the dog? What's wrong with you, brother? Is that how you reward? Imagine the movie. All the animals, brother. They came to rescue Prophet Abraham to stop the fire, brother. That also carries diseases and eats uh, uh, dead meat. There's animals who eat dead meat. Muslims, they eat alive meat. <laughs> Hey Muslim, do you eat living ch live chicken? Like you bring a chicken when it's alive with its, with its feather and you grab it and you bite it? I mean, are you serious? <laughs> they eat that meat? <laughs> We're ordered to kill snakes. We're ordered to kill scorpions. And these by nature are harmful yeah. for people. So killing them is justifiable and it's a legitimate thing to do likewise with the house lizards and there is a hadith in sahih al-bukhari where the prophet told remember the prophet said take us seriously now told us alayhi salatu wasalam, that when prophet ibrahim peace be upon him was thrown by his people in the blazing fire all the creatures of allah used to try and put off the fire with the exception of the house lizard. It Disgust. used to try to blow so that the fire would grow. And this shows you that... By the way, just to let you know, I called the insurance company to insure my house. They said to me, we insure your house against anything except fire lizard. <laughs> Any fire done by desert is not insured because this is <laughs> a criminal action. <laughs> it's not a nature thing, you know. I said, come on, you know, there's a reading in your policy. It says, that the, 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 like, except lizard. They said, yes, because based on the story of what happened to Abraham, we cannot insure your house if the fire caused by a lizard. And I don't know, all of you, if you have insurance, check your insurance. Most likely, if they are aware of the story of Abraham, they will add that to their policy. So check it out. Tell us more, brother. What happened? 
fire would grow. And this shows you that with the exception of the house lizard, it used to try to blow so that the fire would grow. And by the way, I mean, if you think about it, the lizard, I mean, can you imagine how much wind can come from his mouth? Let us be serious here. We have a man, he is in the fire. And there's a lizard. Guy go. He is blowing at the fire. Listen carefully. We are in dangerous time. We are a lizard can kill you. Lizard in the house. I don't know if you, if you are aware of the danger, just to let you see, I mean, what we are talking about. This is a very scary creature. Look at this. Imagine, imagine this creature is in your home or around you. <clears throat> Things is really messed up, brother. This is the enemy of Allah. The enemy of Allah is a black dog, a mice, a lizard. <laughs> a Mickey Mouse, <laughs> a black, a black dog, a black a cat, a black, uh, uh, a black a crow, a black bird, any any animal which is a pure black is the enemy of Allah. Plus, the enemy, the top list of Allah, a lizard. Look in Spanish is called Los Geckos. Limbos, I mean, the name alone is scary. Look at this. I mean, look, guys, let us be honest here. Look at this. Los Gegos Limbos in Pleno Deserto. But that's messed up. I'm telling you, this is very dangerous. Let me translate for you. It says that this animal can eat 99 men in one meal and one female, you know, just for a snack. This is what it says. This is a uh, language here. Uh, this is Vietnamese, okay? <clears throat> so, it says he can eat. Let me translate for you, like, uh, word by word. Los Gegos, Mr. Gegos, limbos, like, he, he, he eat your limbs, you know, <laughs> like, all, like, he eat all kinds of limbs. In Plano, like, in a plain food, like, in one, one meal. Deserto, in the desert, if you see you in the desert, okay? Uh, Brogo so corobo, like he will eat you, he will leave nothing of you. Rebel aqua, which means he will squeeze you and suck the water out of you, even if you are 99 men. How is my English doing? <laughs> I'm sure all of you are so proud of my English. It's okay. <clears throat> uh, anyway, like I was, you know, I was hired to work as a translator for Vietnamese. Uh, you know, in the, in the Czech Republic, uh, when uh, because uh, Trump he was going there, and they asked me if I can uh, translate, I said to them, I, you know, I'm so good in German, and you know they accept by the way, yeah. <clears throat> so, <laughs> what the heck is that? So, brother, are you sure that all the animals they try to stop the fire except the lizard? <laughs> Harmful for people. So killing them is justifiable and it's a legitimate thing to do. Likewise with the house legitimate. lizards. Oh. And there is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari 
where the Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam, that when Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was thrown by his people in the blazing fire, all the creatures of Allah used to try and put off the fire with the exception of the house lizard. It used to try to blow so that the fire would grow. And this shows you that our relationship, not only with people, with everything else is dependent on our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Exactly. So even lizard is not safe from your hand. This is why Islam is a very dangerous cult. As you see, <clears throat> those people, they are targeting pure, like poor, you know, creatures for no reason, just because of a stupid legions. And they believe in such a stupid stories blindly. Do we have any Muhammadan here? He is, and even Muhammad, he says, if you kill it from one, the first shot, you get 100 reward. If you get, if you shot, like if you shoot it twice with the arrow, and you create from the second shot, you get less reward. Any Muhammadan? Anyone? All right, look like today we don't have any Muhammadan, so I'm not going to keep you long. And by the way, we have good news about our brother Philip. He had a surgery today. He did not do the long surgery. It was a shorter one, but the news came from, I guess, from his daughter. She is posting online that he is doing good, and he thank you all for your prayer and your support. So we are happy for him, and we, we, we hope uh, soon he will be back to his family, and he will be... Uh, good and healthy all right and thank you all again for your prayer so i want to say thank you all for being uh, here and uh, i hope i did not uh, offend you uh, and if i find, if I, if I offend you <laughs> excuse me this is what i do <laughs> i have no choice <laughs> if i don't offend you it's mean i said nothing you know, your friend is the one who tell you that your clothes is dirty when they are dirty. Not the one who says to you they are look so nice when they are not. You know, your friend is the one who says to you, hey, your zipper is open. Not the one who says to you, you're fine, go. People will laugh at you. So your true friend is the one who offend you. But his purpose is not to offend. The purpose is to say the truth. And remember, the truth always offend a lot of people the only way not to offend is not to say the truth that is called politically correct and me as a person i don't fit there i'm not qualified for the job to be politically correct so i use the word stupid idiot potato donkey whatever word you want i use them all for a purpose so I will not be a political correct. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And <clears throat> remember Prophet Muhammad, he said, he who raised his head before the Imam, Allah will make his head a head of a donkey. Right? So Muslims, Never raise your head before a Christian prince. Your prophet predicted what exactly will happen to you. And I have witnesses. Try me once, you will become a donkey with certification. <laughs> And you know in the world believe in those garbage. You have to be a certified donkey to believe in this. But look, and this is authentic, sahih. Unbelievable. Thank you, everybody. May the Lord bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince who has serving you humbly for today. And today we split the moon. Tomorrow we are going to grow it. Wait for me. And I'm waiting with you too.